the string theory community went into some level of obnoxiousness that has never before been seen in physics. They became completely intolerable. I want to ask a question about the impact of, of, of string theory. Why is it so worthy of uh, at least somewhat muted derision, perhaps, by basically everyone who's got an alternative uh, grand unified or super unified theory? Why, why is it? Uh, make the steel man case for string theory first, Eric, and then, uh, and then I'd like to hear uh, from, uh, from Garrett, although we did discuss that, so we'll maybe ask uh, an alternate question of Garrett so as not to repeat himself. But ask you, Eric, what's the case for string theory, uh, even if not to devote, uh, even if we ignore the amount of resources that have been devoted to it? Let's just take the case of string theory, qua string theory. What, 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 what's good about it? Well, I mean, first of all, there's a certain amount of naturality at the beginning of it, uh, which is why just generalize hard little balls, which aren't exactly right. Why not start from things that are more interesting than hard little balls, uh, like tiny little pieces of string and circles vibrating in some other space? I think that you, then you ask the question about why did gravity not succumb to the same uh, tools that worked well for what we would call spin one half uh, matter and spin one forces other than gravity, and, and now for the Higgs field, so which is spin zero. Now, there are two other cases. There's spin three halves and spin two before you crap out of this game in which everything in the theory has to come with, uh, with some fraction between zero and two. In that situation, uh, there's a puzzle as to why gravity doesn't easily submit to this uh, quantum imperialism. And... The hope was that if you found any circumstance in which gravity appeared to behave better uh, than in that framework, then that would have to be right. And that was supplemented um, in the early 1980s by some very bizarre discoveries where there were some very narrow uh, constraints called an anomaly cancellation, which appeared to pick out a tiny number of candidates. And so what was tantalizing was that uh, if somebody had actually found a way to circumvent the problems with quantizing gravity and there were a tiny number of coincidences that were necessary, clearly, uh, you know, the good Lord Hashem was uh, urging us on a path to find these things, and you could do it through process of elimination. At that point, string theory turned murderous, and the murderousness is really the problem. It's not string theory per se that's the problem. It was the behavior patterns of the physicists who became so drunk on power and so completely thoroughly obnoxious. And I, and I want to talk about obnoxious above the obnoxious level that physicists are usually at. Physics is a very, physics is a very dangerous and difficult subject. And because it is the most accomplished of communities, uh, arrogance has been a fundamental aspect of doing theoretical physics, just as humility has been a, an important aspect. And those two things are commingled. When physics had been failing for a relatively brief period of time, about 10 years, and string theory was found to have this anomaly cancellation, the string theory community went into some level of obnoxiousness that has never before been seen in physics. They became completely intolerable. They also started doing things like saying, uh, everything is string theory, it's just sort of like Bitcoin maximalists, where the, I, Bitcoin solves everything. I'm having a problem with my children. Don't worry, Bitcoin solves that. Uh, if you find anything that isn't string theory, don't worry, we'll just call it string theory. Everything that you can do, we will write a paper called blank whatever you did, plus it's stringy origins. It is that complete uh, intellectual dishonesty and the failure of the string theorists who embraced it to face it, and the fact that it's concentrated in the baby boom generation as a means of deferring the ultimate tango with reality. Um, where they can keep pumping out papers and saying, look, this is a bit of the 21st century that fell into the 20th century. Uh, tw fell into the 20th century. No, it's not. Um, the fact of the matter is it's a bit, bit of the 20th century that's still hanging around in the 21st century. They refuse to ship a product for different reasons uh, than other people are, who are struggling with it. And more neurons have been spent exploring this theory and failing to find a way to connect it to anything other than mathematical reality. So on the one hand, it's been incredibly interesting because it backfired on the physics community. The people who thought that they would quantize Einstein's geometry, in fact, got it exactly wrong. And what they did is, is that they geometrized the quantum. And so people who, who uh, 
earned as geometers, doing an infinite dimensional differential geometry and the like, spent as string theorists. They would accomplish things in mathematics, and then they would say, uh, this is exactly why string theory is correct. This is a bit what Milton Friedman did when he earned as an economist and he spent uh, as a polemicist telling people what they had to do for their social society. Very often people earn in one place and spend somewhere else. So in part, the problem that we've had is, is that we have these people who we absolutely love, who have been doing amazing work, but it's not the work that they claim that they're doing. They've been advancing the mathematics of quantum field theory. They've been exploring extensions of quantum field theory. They are not, when they say that we're doing something in gravity, usually it's not about gravity. When they say that they're talking about particles, they're not talking about particles. As I've joked, many string theorists, do, I don't think, could find the men's room at CERN uh, if their life depended on it. They are not in contact with the physical world. They forget things you know, like the Gelman Nishijima formula and, and things that you know, Garrett probably still cares about. I think that the, the serious problem is, is that there's no one in a position to tell some of the world's most brilliant people that there's an aspect of QAnon in physics. This is the cargo cult science that Feynman warned us about. And the fact is we can't necessarily just go towards Brian's preferred uh, answer about depending upon experiment, and we can't trust the people who claimed beauty uh, the way Sabina has been going after the string theorists. And the fact is that the string theory community has not been economically powerful because we have economically undermined the physics community, as with every other academic science community. In order to have this work, you have to go back to the political economy of physics. And the political economy of physics demands that the middle finger be accessible to every generation so that we don't wait for funeral by funeral. What's happening now is that the baby boomers are eventually going to age out. The key dividing line is 1951. Frank Wilczek, who you've just had on your show, was the last person in some sense to make contact with the standard model. Ed Witten, born in the same year, uh, a little bit later in the year, is a guy who could not possibly have been denied a Nobel Prize at this age in any other time period. This guy is one of the most brilliant people, and I hope to God, Brian, that you have him on your show. Despite my frustrations with him, it has been an honor to live in the same era as Ed Witten. Well, he says there's only a... room for one EW on the Into the Impossible podcast. <laughs> and my response to that joke is, you. <laughs> uh, the point is, is that Ed Witten is one of the most important minds alive, and he, is, he has earned... Uh, a tremendous amount of respect based on what he's done for geometry, but more importantly, the mathematics of field theory to show that quantum field theory, rather than a grab bag of strange things that happen to work, is a canonical and necessary mathematical structure. But what he has not done is to show us that string theory is the likely winner. And the key problem is, is that we have got to have open debates in the community where the people in the Holy of Holies, the Institute for Advanced Study, are actually on the same stage with people who are, can competently disagree with them for the same reasons that it is important that many of us who do not support what's going on with the Democratic Party of the United States, uh, because we don't think that it any longer re represents a real and workable left and that we think that it has gone down an incredibly dangerous path, have to be allowed on the same programs as people like Brian Williamson, uh, Brian Williams rather, or Don Lemon, because what we have is an illusion. And the illusion of string theory is what's causing the bitterness. It's not the string theory, and it's not even the work that the string theorist has done. It is the murderous intent by which they have stunted other communities that have sought to challenge them as, and say, you know what, you haven't gotten as far as you claim, and you are not correct that other avenues shouldn't be pursued so that you can gobble up the resources. Yeah.